So now stemming and lemmatization, which is basically the final part of our data cleaning part. So here the idea is that there are words which are basically very similar in meaning. They convey the similar things. So basically the words copy, copied, copying. So these are basically the same different verb forms of the same word copy, right? So they're stemming from the base word, which is basically the same thing. So even if your text basically different, basically authors use the same word, uh, they'd probably sometimes use copy, sometimes use copied, sometimes use copying. So if you're trying to look at the quality of tokens, right? So basically the kind of words which have been, if we think that the kind of words basically an author has used is, is, a, is a kind of good feature of uh, indicating where the which author has written that particular piece if you are thinking that the nature of those words basically if that particular word has been used or not is a good feature to kind of detect which author has authored that particular piece then it's good to kind of uh, you know because some author would have probably used copy some author would have used copied uh, so it, the idea is basically take all of this word and stem them down stem basically there's a stem word from where all of them have stemmed from and kind of reduce them down to the same word, right? So that's the idea that is called stemming. So you have words like beauty, beautiful, uh, fly, flying, all of this word, fly, flying, fly, flew. All of these are basically stemming from the best word, right? Which is basically the same word, which is fly. So that's the idea uh, that we are going to try and do right now, which is basically stemming is this concept where you're trying to based on similarity of spelling, you're going to try and reduce them down to the same base word, right? So that's the concept of stemming. There's nothing much more about it. Uh, stemming helps basically to create a group of words which are basically very similar meanings, right? And stemming works on a set of rules and there are some, basically there's a lot of algorithms which are there for stemming. Uh, the algorithms basically differ in the way they measure the similarity across words. So, but the idea is this, right? So there are words which are basically very similar and then there are words and then there's this participle forms right ing ed and all of those added to that particular word and that kind of makes it a different word uh ing ed full and all of this all of this that you can think of right the way english language is structured so the idea is uh, can we can we stem all of this down to their base form right such that we know that basically the same meaning so all same meaning words are basically reduced down to the same base verb right that's the idea that we're using for stemming. Again, this is something extremely tough. You cannot do it by yourself. That's why you rely on NLTK. NLTK already houses a lot of, lot of different kind of stemming algorithms. You can use any of them to kind of see. So this is a porter stemmer. So this is one kind of stemmer. In this case, you can see we have stemmed the word duckling. You have again use another stemmer and we are trying to do the same thing. All of them. So just one thing to keep in mind is this stemming process is basically um, not as much algorithm, not as much linguistic based as it is algorithmic based uh, because the idea is so that's why when you split kind of stemming them down you can see that the stem word that the word they're stemmed into is basically in case of duckling is some word called duck l. Now duck l doesn't have any physical represent any meaning in the English word right you don't know what duck l means but the idea is that that's the idea in case of stemming in case of stemming you are basically looking at similarity of spellings across multiple words and in this particular case you can probably think that basically because duckling is basically duckel plus ing right and you know that ing is a normal form that is associated with a lot of verbs uh, so fly flying is basically the same thing but ing added so that's why this particular stemmer has recognized to remove ing from end of words and that's why the address is stemmed down to duck l uh, that that's the concept so stemming not necessarily is a linguistic based process it's more of an algorithmic based process where you're kind of trying to learn what can be the different forms of the same verb and then you're trying to remove those things that are additive and in this particular case ing ed as i said ing ed full all of those d all of those basically the different additive forms that are added to verbs to make them but they convey the same meaning and your point of stemming is basically removing those additive features right so that's why we have duckel and uh, this is now snowball stemmer so when you do vent it still stems it down to vent uh, that's the concept of stemming so stemming was more of a ling non-linguistic based approach to kind of stem every word that probably might contain the similar meaning into its base verb right and then the concept of lemmatization is basically uh, where we are kind of trying to reduce each verb, each word into its corresponding. So the verb is, was, where, has, have, 
all of them are basically the there's a base verb which is be and these are basically all the variations of the same word right so this is not exactly more of spelling based uh, so the same word is right so is are was where has have similarly go on went so these are different verb forms of the same particular word right so uh, that's what we are concerned about right now lemmatization is basically taking all of this even if it was where or it has have reducing them down to the same word so this is more of linguistic based approach rather than algorithmic uh, lemmatization is basically when you're trying to take different verb forms past principle past future tense past tense and trying to bring them down to the same word right so that is more of linguistic based there's not much of algorithmic based thing and uh, that's about it so that's lemmatization so lemmatization is basically in this particular case as you can see when we use this word net lemmatization on the word went it lemmatizes into the base word which is go right so stemming and lemmatization are the concept where you, the idea is basically the same you have words which are very similar which are very exactly similar or very similar close very very or very close to each other in terms of the meanings they convey and the idea is to basically take all of these different verbs which are basically the same meaning conveyed verbs and kind of put them down to the base verb right and that's what we are doing right now here so that stemming is basically one way where you kind of look at similarity of spellings and reduce them down lemmatization is more linguistic based where you kind of looking at different verb forms and reducing it down fair enough so that's about it and the final thing which is word cloud word cloud is basically yeah as you can probably see it's already written it's the eda equivalent for nlp it's basically where you're trying to visualize what is the kind of amount of text that is there used in your current text you would use word cloud word cloud is nothing but based on the frequency you basically have the size of that particular word so if it's just in this case it was a cyber security related thing probably and that's why you see that there's a security word which is probably the highest it's kind of has the highest font size and the hackers probably are again something which is highest word size and then there's what called said right said is again something which is highly which is probably highly occurring word in the text so this is more like eda as i've already said that it's basically kind of based on the frequency of uh, occurrence of words you're kind of plotting them down and that's about it the only thing there's not much of a value except for this particular case you can probably see that said is something that has occurred a lot of times in your text and that's why its frequency is so high so you can probably just put them in stop words right that that's the idea right that's the idea we have of uh, that's the idea we can kind of get out of eda is basically we can see the words which are kind of getting repeated a lot of times and kind of use them to put them in stock words and probably also if you think there are words that are not being picked up correctly you can kind of do that that's that's must uh, uh, so that's the whole concept of media if there's a word which is occurring a lot of times you can probably put that into stop words and that's mostly about it as of now so now we are kind of uh, done with the word cleaning part of things so let's kind of summarize what were the cleaning steps so first part is kind of lower your capitals right so that's not what is mentioned here so i'm kind of trying to add to that so first part is uh always convert your uppercase or whatever case it is there to lowercase data once you convert into a lowercase then the first step is if you want to split into sentences you would want to split into sentences then you can generate tokens then for each of those tokens you can basically uh, look at uh, the stop words which are there and kind of remove the tokens that are part, basically stop words once you have the filtered sentences which are basically once you have removed the stop words now in that clean text then you want to do something called stemming and lemmatization which is basically nothing but words which are basically very similar in con with tokens per se which are very similar to each other you want to remove them you want to basically stem them down to the same base word right so that's the concept that we are familiar with as of now that is kind of completes a rough structure of data cleaning obviously there are a lot of lot of different steps also in data cleaning which uh, you can probably have a look at the additional resources to kind of get an idea of all of that but the basic data cleaning kind of thing kind of ends here where you have converted all your tokens the clean tokens and you have stemmed them down to their base verb base word right so now we are kind of go and try and go into model building after this 
So before we go into model building, what are the different implementations of NLP is basically something that I've already talked about before. If you're looking at this slide, we, we, here we are basically talking about the different uh, applications based NLPs, uh, different applications and we are kind of categorizing and bucketing them into different four buckets. The first step is regular based expression based uh, systems. And what is regular expression again? So again, for people who are probably familiar with some kind of computer science background, you know that regular expression is nothing but a uh, string pattern. So regular expression based search is basically something where you know that the string pattern and you are basically trying to search for that particular pattern in a kind of text, right? So the, for example, you're trying to look at uh, say a text. Uh, this is a text, right? So there's a lot of, this is someone, some, some random text, right? So probably say some, Twitter text or some some text you have of sorts and then you are trying to look for an email ID within this particular text now you know that what is the kind of what is the kind of way email ID would be structured so email ID would be basically be some characters and then that would be followed by an at the rate and then that would be followed by something and then that would be followed by a dot com right so you know that there's a pattern to email IDs now if you're trying to search for in a text for a particular thing like an email ID or you say you know you're searching for phone numbers now phone numbers are something that you know would be 10 digit thing or a 12 digit thing and all of them would be numbers right so say a basic search right i'm not obviously there could always be variations of this but the basic thing say probably is something where you know that there should be 10 numbers sequentially one after the other and that's the pattern that you're looking out for so if you're trying to look for uh, mobile numbers if you're trying to look for email ids it's basically some some any length of strings followed by an at the rate again some strings followed by dot com right so that's the kind of uh, say a basic email id search would look like so if you're trying to look for this particular email ids so if you're trying to extract all the email ids from a given text blob of text so then you're basically trying to search for a pattern like this now this kind of pattern searching is basically what is implemented by regular expressions now if you want to learn a little bit more about regular expressions as i said you can already have a look at the uh, additional resources to kind of get more idea about what exactly it's regular expression search is and how you build this kind of regular expressions so this particular thing right that i said basically is is a sort of so it's not exactly look like this it's basically something like star at the red star dot com right so this is basically what you're trying to search so this is a kind of pattern that you're looking out for there's a star then there's at the red then there's a star then there's a dot com right so this particular pattern how you can search for this kind of patterns is something that is decided by regular expression but as of now you can kind of just this understand this that regular expression is basically nothing but pattern search based algorithms right so regular expression algorithms are mostly used for say this kind of basic task like where you're trying to extract you have tried, you have basically got a lot of text and you're trying to extract say email ids phone numbers all of that from that particular text use regex and also a lot of times as features for machine learning problems right because a lot of times you basically probably want to see uh, you probably tend to think for this particular example for example you know uh, number of times probably email ids were used in a particular article or some other patterns were probably used in a particular article that is probably a good feature in good feature probably indicating the kind of author that has written it so in case that's the case you might want to use regular expression to generate features as well uh, the second kind of application of nlp is basically a machine learning based system which is what we have already discussed which is basically classifying in positive negative sentiment into say looking at research paper classifying into regression classification based problems so all of these are machine learning based problems right so where you have a supervised problem where you're trying to kind of uh, take the text and classify it into different things right so it could also be spam not spam foul language not foul language all of these are basically examples of machine learning based system now the third is basically linguistic or rule based systems which is basically more to do with the linguistic part of things so part of speech pos tagging right so basically tagging each other word as whether it's a noun it's a pronoun it's a it's a verb it's an adverb adjective so all of that thing right is basically another part of nlp which is something we would probably deal with in the next lecture a lot and uh, then the fourth kind of thing is basically the dictionary lookup based system which is basically the unsupervised part of things which is given a say a text document trying to figure out uh, 
which are the most similar text article to that right so that is more of an unsupervised kind of a thing where you're trying to basically given a text document you're trying to find its similarity to other documents in a given dictionary and then basically based on that you kind of say that this is the text document which is most related to this particular text so that's the unsupervised part of nlp and uh, this also basically concerns about the same thing you know you construct features and then you construct those features for all your text documents and then you do that whole similarity thing right the cosine distance all of those things that we have talked about in unsupervised log on to gray adams learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates